it is always a pleasure to be joined by my dear friend and one of the great voices in the history of rock music, <laughs> Mr. David Coverdale, D.C. How oh, are you, my friend? Eduardo, my darling boy, how nice of you to say this. <laughs> How's things there? How you feeling, my friend? How's things going there in uh, in Tahoe? Oh, my God. Are you kidding? Uh, Texas has more snow than us. Uh, it's really chilling to see, no pun intended. But thankfully, we're all healthy. Um, we had a bit of a scare with one of our engineers uh, who thankfully has recovered from the, the dreaded virus. And uh, and we're just moving along. As you know, we, uh, we've reached the, the end of the trilogy. As of tomorrow, the, uh, the blues album finally... Finally, rears its beautiful blue sapphire head. Today, well, I think we're releasing the last of the uh, unboxing videos, uh, <laughs> thanking people for their patience. And we have a brand new, never seen before video tonight. Uh, it's a surprise when I go to bed. So it's all, all go at Hook City, baby. All go. Well, I got to tell you, I've really been enjoying these. It started with the rock album, as you mentioned, the love album, and then yeah. the blues album, as it's being called, the Red, White, and Blue Trilogy. The blues album uh, is out tomorrow, CD or on blue vinyl. And I, I really, David, have loved what you've done with these these uh, remixes uh. and what have you, because it's fun for me, when even when I hear songs, whether they're uh, newer or older, and these collections span the whole thing, but it's fun for me yeah. as a fan to hear artists put a fresh coat of paint on work that they've done yes. and give an alternate take on it. Going through this whole process and creating these three records, what, what's what been the most fun for you about it? What's been the most eye-opening thing about it that you've taken away? Oh, God. Well, you, know, you start with um, Slide It In. Um, after achieving a really beautiful mix for the last studio album, Flesh and Blood, uh, I sort of booked uh, my, my mixer, Christopher Collier, for three weeks, and we were finished with Flesh and Blood in, um, in a week. And I, th I was, oh, my God, well, let me live with that. Uh, what are we going to do? I said, have you ever heard of the Sided In album? And he said, oh, my God, since I was six years old, it's been my father's favorite album. Thank you for making me feel even older. Um, <laughs> so hearing these things, you know, because you could hear dialogue in the studio or cozy and laughing and and drinking and partying, all of these elements to hear after 35 years uh, on, on, on pristine uh, uh, digital transfers from the, atalog, uh, cat, uh, from the analog was breathtaking, Edward. You know, so the emotional aspect, and then you get to being here, hearing John Sykes' guitar without all that echo on for the first mm. time, you know, since the actual final mix. You know, we've cleaned everything up, Chris has achieved this very consistent uh, sonic identity, which is, is the stuff of dreams for me after working with so many generations, so many different players and so much technology and engineering. So to achieve all this is great. The, the, the big disappointment for me, and I know for a lot of fans, is that I, I haven't been able to go into anything uh, um, after the Saints and Sinners record. All of those albums, the Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City, the Walking in the Shadow of the Blues, the, the estate of my former manager uh, owns them. I have no access to them. I can only do this uh, labor of love uh, with um, projects that I actually own uh, as, as the artist. So it's a big, you know, uh, I'm being asked a lot now to revisit those songs, which is a, very, a great possibility once the lockdown is finished and, I, and my musicians can travel here um, uh, safely. Um, I'm just going to keep uh, upscaling videos. We've got a bunch of live things. We have the first box set, Restless Heart, set for later this year. Uh, that's so exciting. It's with featuring uh, Joel Sh uh, Hoekstra doubling Adrian Vandenberg's guitars. Not one Flying Dutchman, but two Flying Dutchmen. <laughs> uh, and the amazing, as you can testify, um, Derek Scorching Sherinian uh, sure. on just blistering organ and bringing a great organic aspect to the slip of the tongue tracks, which I was missing significantly and of course bringing his work to uh 
to the Restless Heart tracks that are featured on the Blues album, uh, Too Many Tears. Um, well, River Song, we feature Mike Finnegan. That's my, River Song is my tribute to Jimi Hendrix. And I had the pleasure and privilege of working with one of the organ players off the um, Electric Ladyland album, Mike Finnegan. Oh, my God. You know, sitting at his feet, listening to stories, Hendrix stories was just marvelous. Uh, but yeah, Doug Aldridge, and you know, we're both really big fans of Doug. Uh, and you hear his work, terrific, really ballsy. It's, uh, it's just, and of course, we've turned a bunch of the reverb off and stuck my voice up louder. Uh, so you don't have to strain to hear what I'm saying. It's, is this love, not is this lunch? <laughs> <laughs> well when when you when you go through what what's really cool about this too all three of these records including the blues album which again is out everywhere tomorrow is you know I imagine for me as a fan I go through this and I listen to it and you're you're pulling tracks and assembling tracks from all different periods of your career yeah. and for me it takes me back to the time i first heard it and puts me back in that space uh, where i was yeah. as as a lifelong fan in my in my oh, life yeah. For you, I imagine it's really impactful to go back and revisit this because it just must be a flood of memories come crashing back from the good, the bad, the ugly, what was going on at that time in your oh life. Oh, my God, yeah. Do you enjoy yeah. those walks yeah. down memory lane, David? Do you enjoy oh uh, what that conjures? Well, absolutely. The third, the, it's always been for me, my, as I've said to you, my songs and lyrics are like diaries. I just don't name names. But that doesn't stop me seeing and, uh, and, and, uh, or visualizing that time period, the feelings that were involved. Uh, and you're right, it's a whole layered, multi-layered memory. So if I want to, uh, which I learned very, very quickly while we were remixing the slide in, you know, hearing Mel Galley and me doing background vocals and laughing and joking with Martin Birch, these were just nuggets to, to warm my heart. Um, but, you know, I remember it was a trouble project. Most of my, uh, you know, once you finished your work, you don't go, you don't remember the pulling your hair out stuff. But when you're listening to repeatedly, you see if it's working together as a project, like these compilation albums, it's impossible not to relive those moments. If I ever do that, write that book, How White Was My Snake, I'm just going to listen to a whole bunch of music to, to have those uh, video diaries opened, you know, the, what the lyrics are on about, were the, the state of mind. Slow and Easy were recorded at four, four o'clock in the morning after a night on the tiles in Munich, you know, and Cozy Powell insisted I use the guy vocal, which is most, mostly what is on the finished song, that I was just making stuff up as, uh, as we jammed the track at four o'clock in the morning. It's, you know, those are the memories, amazing stuff. When you talk about Slide It In, such a great record, many people know there are two versions of that, really three now if you count the remixed version that you did. <laughs> yes. But but were you at the well, time, were you down with the idea of that record? when when Because that's the time where the lineup shifted and Sykes came in. Were you okay with the label decision at that time to do a, a re-record remix to put John on it? Do you like, is there a version you favor from the original no, versus at no. the time the re-record? Well, I must say the version I favor is the hybrid of both of them, which is the recent, you know, the 35th anniversary uh, remix, uh, which I did uh, in, I mean, 2019 or whatever with Chris Collier. Uh, that's a hybrid that's utilizing both John, you know, and Mickey Moody and Mel Galley. Now, this is the wild thing. Um, when I did the deal with Geffen, I said, uh, if you want to remix this, I, at that time, brought John Sykes in and Mickey Moody had gone, and I brought Neil Murray back into the band. I said, so part of that, this deal, if you want to remix it, I want to put these my new guys on there so it's more, you know, current, as it were. Uh, and when we were mixing, we found out there wasn't as much John Sykes on there. He'd, Kolodner had said to Keith Olsen, oh, focus on these. Uh, it was really shocking to find... Uh, a lot of uh, rhythm guitars kind of missing that were ju just the original Mickey Moody or, or Mel Galley ones. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we toughened it up, as you can hear. 
Um, but that was that was an eye opener for me. You know. Also, I was really bitterly dis- disappointed when we remixed "Here I Go Again." Uh, that the engineer at uh, Keith Olsen's studio had erased uh, the original guitar solo John Sykes had played, um, which, you know, uh, it, it wasn't really where John was at, uh, which is why we put Adrian Vandenberg on there. But the, the, the rules and regulations of recording is you don't wipe anything. And we couldn't find John solo anyway, because that would have been a, a blistering uh, thing for the hardcore um, extra, you know, bonus track for the right. box set. But it just wasn't there, sadly. You know, one, one thing on uh, on Sykes, and I want to ask you a few other things uh, related to this blues album, but, you know, in, in recent years, you, I know for a fact, you've been in a headspace where anybody that you've had issues with or been contentious with, you've done your best to reach out and try to sort of bury the hatch. And I know we've talked about yeah, that on the air yeah. before you, the point in your life you're at, you just want to be cool with everybody and celebrate the history of white snake. And if people yeah. follow you online, you do that. You put out photos and all that, but, but that's the one nut you haven't been able to crack. <laughs> Has it been to, well, to uh, sort no, of well, deal with and reconcile? Too. Well, the circumstances, um, there were attempts to engage, which were just, uh, and I think you can speak as well, because yeah. I'd ask you to insert yourself at times, and, uh, and nothing came back. So I, uh, my feeling is I, I move on. I, I don't dwell on stuff. Oh, my God. I, you know, I've told you I'm like the Edith Piaf of rock. I have no <laughs> regrets, particularly after... You know, attempted. There was a couple of people, not only professionally but privately, weren't interested in uh, um, burying whatever hatchet was there. So once I've done that, once you've made that attempt, you're fine. Your karma book's clean. It's you know. So it's 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 sad, but I move on. I'm very blessed in my life. Uh, I have no place for regret, haters, you know, negators. You know that. It's uh, I try to spread as much positive energy as I can, certainly uh, amplified it since we've been in lockdown. You know, you've seen my uh, social media grow uh, in te- amazingly over the last year. And, and really, I just try to keep people uh, light, have a good laugh, some information, feed the music and video, uh, and, and just try to keep spirits up as much as possible. It's the next best thing I can do to actually go out and perform and tour. So, David, I want to ask you about a couple different periods represented on this record. I love the Forevermore album, which came out in 2011. Uh It's hard to believe that's 10 years ago already. But you've got two (laughs) tracks on this record with Steal Your Heart Away and also Whipping Boy Blues. Uh, Another one of my favorite Whitesnake lineups. Tishy's one of my favorite drummers ever. and, uh, And Doug Aldridge, of course. Do you feel like that period of your career, because I kind of do, maybe because of the change in music, maybe because of whatever's going on, at least in America, that, that the quality of stuff you did in, in, say, the last 10 years or so, maybe a little overlooked? Well, um, that's just the state of play. That's just the circumstances. You have to uh, look out and see your full audiences you know wherever we went in the world forevermore was extraordinarily successful it was the first album we get delivered to frontiers uh and i think uh, that and flesh and blood are the most successful successful projects that released but the the circumstances was a great fun time but really part of this uh trilogy this taste of things to come compilation scenario is to have very very well-known members of the family, like, is this love, still of the night, give me all your love, introducing the lesser known, distant cousins. And right. that, I think, uh, we're going to achieve. We've already achieved somewhat. A lot of people had no idea uh, of, of, can you hear the wind blow, et cetera. Some of the, um, that working with independent records was great for advance, uh, record companies was great for advances, but they didn't have the real footprint in major markets, particularly the U.S., so this is a real, real pleasure for me to be introducing songs to people for the first time that I think are as strong as the most successful stuff that I've uh, uh, had in my life. Yeah, that's a great point. You, you may hook them in with the "Is this loves of the world?" or "Give me all your love." But then when <laughs> yes, you get them I'm in, an angler. I'm, a, I'm, a <laughs> I'm, an, I'm hooking them in there, baby. Come on. 
<laughs> yeah, you get them. You get them to the table, and then all of a sudden they discover yeah. so, "Steal Your Heart Away" or, or "Whipping Boy Blues" or some of these other things you've done. And along those lines, another thing I was really happy to see you include because for me, I recall this very vividly, and it was one of the first times when one of the times I really got the start of where I really got to know you well when you. And it was a, it was a thing that really I think served as a relaunch for your career back into rock because if I'm not mistaken you hadn't announced doing White Snake again but you did announce a solo record and that was back again 21 years ago a record called Into the Light which was a solo album I remember I had you on my radio show for it at that yeah. time you were dabbling right. with the idea of we White had, Snake we had a couple of New York we had a couple of New York finest come in yes. to hang hang for the show if you remember. We were yes, doing that, a live midnight broadcast. It was adorable. That was the yes. first time, yeah, first time. And that was, was that, that was really a table setter. <laughs> yeah, that's 2000, 21 years ago. So that was really at that time, David, because I remember having you and talking about it, and the question kept coming up, well, what about Whitesnake? You're like, no, well, I'm doing this under my own name. But yeah, but really, yeah, when you yeah. look back on Into the Light, that was the, 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 uh, the prelude, if you will, the table setter to really going – Full on into White Snake, which you did shortly after, yes. right? Yes, it's um, it was really interesting because I, I worked with fabulous, well, as always, fabulous musicians. Uh, Earl Slick, you know, extremely well from David Bowie, uh, and a guy, uh, an extraordinary singer guitar player called Doug Bossy, Marco Mendoza, of course, and Denny Camasi. That was the nucleus of what we were going to call the Ministry of Blues, aka the mob and uh and and they were the band on that you know i'd brought denny kamasi and he came in to to work with me on coverdale page and then the restless heart record so i asked him a super super player uh yeah. asked him if he would uh do the into the light sessions with me so that was a great band but i was getting a lot of pressure we were coming up to like the 25th anniversary uh a lot of pressure from the people at emi um to to work on uh, silver anniversary projects and things like that. And suddenly I started to get calls from people, uh, particularly the Scorpions. How would you fancy doing a co-headline tour of, of the U.S.? And I thought, well, that would tie in. You know, it's like domino principle. Uh, one thing falling into another led to this synchronicity of positive events. So, you know, I put a band together, which was only going to be for three months with Tommy Aldridge, uh, Marco Mendoza, Doug Aldridge, Red Beach, uh, and Timothy Drury. Uh, and we ended up staying out, as you remember, it was so successful. Um, uh, and I said to the guys, you know, do you want to do this every, every year or so? And everyone was down with it. We had, everybody got on well. But at that time, I had no intentions of making a White Snake record. Uh, I didn't like the way the industry was at all. Um, and I was very happy to li to live in the wilds of Lake Carbo, far removed from Beverly Hills at that time. What turned you on the industry? What turned you to say, okay, I'll I'll go full in and I'll start making White Snake records again and I'll start touring with White Snake again? What what you you weren't into it, but what changed? Well, suddenly out of the blue, we start getting this part of this synchronicity. Um EMI, the old EMI, oh my God, how long? I'm, my, my son says I'm older than dirt. <laughs> At one time, uh, after the uh, enforced uh, turning Restless Heart, you know that album, I, I refused to give it to, you know, Gethin had, had a bunch of new people, executives that didn't know me and I didn't know them. And we, we found this out when we were working with him on the Coverdale Page record. It was really, really a disappointing change from the team I'd worked with uh, for the success of Slide It In, 87, and Sliver the Tongue. Uh, and it just, you know, I'd done very well, and I went, you know, I don't need this. So it was a kind of quietly disappear. But it's changed. I'm working now as I did at the beginning with a lot of people who uh, have music in them. They are musicians. So when I talk with the Rhino team that I'm involved with, we discuss music. You know, they know, they recognize the vision when I presented the Red, White and Blues idea because as a heritage artist or legacy artist, uh, the deal I made with Rhino was to make box sets. 
of, you know, putting in, you see all that stuff, demos, and one of uh, people's favorite aspects of, uh, of the box sets is the evolution CD, when you hear the birth of an idea and where it started and where it's going uh, and where it ultimately ended up. You know, for instance, the 87 album, you hear the first time I was playing ideas to John Sykes, you know, in a, a villa in south of France. Uh, and that's fascinating to people. So I just started to get approached by first off was a very strong European independent company called SPV. And they came in and, uh, and made me an offer. Really, I couldn't refuse Eddie. It was a very solid offer. Uh, and I said to Doug, let's see if we can get on as well in composition as we do as people. And we wrote two scorching albums together. Super creative partner. I had a blast. Absolute blast. And I always oh. send Doug, you know, stuff, you know, that we've got a video coming out tonight, uh, which features Doug, you know, f uh, from this, uh, from the blues album that nobody's ever seen before. It's brand new. It's very fun. Uh, and I always make sure that whoever's been playing on the record, they get to hear it uh, and see, see what's coming. We connected recently with Chris Frazier uh, on drums and, and reconnected with Uriah Duffy, uh, from the good to be bad times, you know, so it's, it's really fun for me. I must confess. You mentioned the Coverdale page record a couple of times when you were on with me a yeah. year or two ago, I brought that record up to you and you had said how you'd love to do something similar with that. You'd love to get, get a hold of it and maybe do a reissue. Maybe there's some bonus tracks, any progress on that front? Well, I got to tell you, there's been immense progress. Um, I've finally reached a, a very positive agreement uh, with my former record company um, uh, regarding missing assets. And, and I, I got the rights to the Coverdale Page album. So, of course, my first phone call was to Jimmy. I said, we've got it. We've got it back. We can do with it what we want. And, of course, Jimmy's in lockdown in the UK where it's really very heavy duties going over there. So he's in his country estate. And I said, I'd love you to think of this, uh, of course, and this is, you know, Jasper suddenly gets terribly ill, uh, wildfires that nearly take my house out. So I literally just texted Jimmy two days ago and said, Jimmy, I'm so sorry I haven't been in touch, um, but we're, we're resuming uh, contact starting next week to discuss. I've got a couple of ideas. I want to see if we could write uh, courtesy of FaceTime or um, Zoom. Um, I've got a couple of ideas which I think would be good for if indeed we can get back into the studio and plan for a very big, luxurious, complete box set uh, of the 30th anniversary in 2023. Um, so your idea so is you, you'd like I, to create new stuff with them. Do, this is what I'd, what I'd like to. We've got four unreleased tracks, um, wow. uh, which just need to be mixed. But I have a, you know, since we reconnected, I've been messing around writing at home. Uh, I have two ideas which could make really fun tracks for, you know, just to throw at him and see, here, see what you can do with this. The way we did it before, we, we wrote really very potent music together. Um, so the other thing that I recommended to him was that uh, let's remaster the original. But I'd love you in England with a mixer of your choice to re do the Jimmy Page mix of the album. And I'll do the David Coverdale mix as bonus stuff, you know. And, uh, and I think that'd be great. He trusts me. I trust him, you know. Uh, and I think it'd be great for the fans to get Jimmy's take on it. Because we did everything 50-50 on the project. It was an amazing three years together. I loved it. So, yeah, that's you definitely in the pipeline. It's really how how soon everybody can start behaving sensibly uh, and in a community sense uh, to, so we can get this rid of this virus so we can all comfortably, safely uh, go to recording studios or, you know, I can't even bring my guys in because I'm not prepared to fly them in, in this condition, you know. So, you know, I've got tracks. I'm dying to these guys to get playing in White Snake, but it's getting them safely to the studio, Eddie, you know. I, I would think Jimmy, yeah, J Jimmy has done wonderful work with the Zeppelin catalog and he seems to want to do that sort of work and also seems to want to maybe at some point actually create some new stuff. 
I would think yeah. he would be really interested and receptive to what you want to do on a couple different levels. Did you get a read from him if he wants to, in fact, do it oh, when yeah, he yeah, can yeah. do it? It's he's like, down with it. He's just at this at this moment in time. He's just not as I. T- neither am I. He's right. not. He doesn't have at his country estate. He. Does, I don't think he has a studio, um, and he certainly doesn't want to drive into London. Uh, that's definitely you know he and I are target ages for this dreadful virus. So you know we've been following. We're coming up to a year of quarantine. It's mad. I know. So I completely support him in that scenario because there isn't any rush. There's nothing's going to be going on this year. Even if we have the opportunity of recording, I can record stuff over here, send him the drive for him to do his part, and we can, you know, mix it uh, through the technology now, which is something you couldn't do before. But I have a studio at home, and, and, and Jimmy doesn't. So I'm hoping we can get some new bits and pieces and ideas uh, and, and put that into play next year. Yeah. When it'll be safer to, you know, to, to get around. What, what, one last thing, and then I'll let you go. Um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you, of course, are in it as a member of Deep Purple, yeah. rightfully so. And I know that in yeah. stuff, I've talked to you and Glenn about it, it was not the best of experiences, and there was a weird tension with the other guys and all it that. It was for Glenn and I. It was good for Glenn and me, for sure. Do you have any, do you feel and do you have any uh, uh, hankering, I guess, for, for lack of a better word, that oh, White Snake that you'd I'd, like to I'd be in with that. White Snake? Oh, are you kidding? I'd love that. Uh, the idea of bookends for me, you know, for Purple and White Snake, that'd be adorable. Um, it's, it's, you know, my prayers right now uh, are focused on, number one, getting out of this scenario and God willing being able to do my appreciation and gratitude farewell tour, a legitimate farewell tour, which actually 2020 and 2021 was going to be, I just hadn't announced that it was going to be my uh, farewell to um, big chest beating rock tours. Oh, so you want to, you're, you're going to do one last round. Is that the plan going forward? One well, last God tour? willing, God willing, but that's going to depend on how well we work as a community nationally and internationally. Um, it's uh, that, that is my dream. Um, as opposed to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for White Snake, which would be just a, a glorious validation. Um, but it's more important for me to be able to go around the world, uh, the people who supported me and enabled my life uh, and my journey to be so amazing for 50 years, for God's sake. You know, it's my 50th anniversary in 23 from joining Deep Purple. Uh, mm. it's, it's immense achievement for me when I, when I do actually reflect on it. As I say, I'd love the validation of, of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But you know what? I'm not greedy. I've already got one. It's maybe somebody else's turn. My God, could you imagine the amount of people that would be on that stage if they had everybody that was ever in Whitesnake? <laughs> well, I, I would only hope it was during lockdown. <laughs> With a mute button. Oh, my God. No, it's uh, honest to God, considering the insane challenges uh, that are going on on a daily basis, you know, um, i got to tell you, we're in a good place. And dear God, we're releasing a new record tomorrow, a new video tonight. Eddie, you know, we're still doing our thing. It's almost the music Even industry. In <laughs> oh, it's, um, it's, I'm very grateful. I'm incredible. Every day, it's, uh, as, as the people on social media know, uh, I express appreciation and gratitude and remind people that they're, they're appreciated and loved. You know, well, I hope I are, hope you're you know. I hope you're able to do that that farewell tour because there are a lot of people concerned that have called my show in the last year who are rock fans yeah. who are worried that this pandemic could end up being the farewell for some artists where some just say you know what it's not worth it yeah. coming back I'm good I'm sitting home uh, even when yeah. things come well, back to some degree you've got to consider yeah you've got to consider that a lot of the artists now who've been set to go out last year like me. We're up, we're up, you know, I thought it'd be amazing to retire at 69. The lead, sing, the lead singer with Whitesnake retires at 69. It's like the best <laughs> headline 
I can imagine. I'd already designed the T-shirts, for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know whether physically I'm in good shape. Physically and, and vocally, I'm in really good hands. I have an amazing doctor. I have a gym at home, so I can maintain uh, being in shape and healthy. Um, uh, I, I really pace my drinking, um, which I totally enjoy. Uh, but it, I have to pace it because... You know, I'm not blessed in the uh, the calorie department, um, but the circumstances, singing still of the night is like a lion's roar every night. You know, uh, it's not so much the actual performing, it's the traveling that becomes exhausting as you get older. No matter how comfortable that, you know, jet is, it's still a physically debilitating experience. And, and that, that's my only concern there. So I, I owe it to myself and to the people who supported my work is to, to stay in shape uh, and ready to go, God willing, when they give us the green light. Well, good. That's good to hear. We Hopefully we get one more uh, bite of the White Snake Apple and all these great songs and one more killer live Pleasure. band that you have now with Joel and Reb and, and Tommy oh, and... Yeah. Uh, uh, Michael, and of course, how could we get uh, my, my Italian friend there, Michele, if I'm saying his oh, name right. Yes, he's the sweetest. What a sweet, what a great bunch of guys. I've got to yeah. tell you, uh, it's not pretend when you see these guys being positive about each other. It really is true. And you you know, you, you see the behind-the-scenes stuff. Yeah. These are a, he- a very healthy, happy bunch of guys. God willing, we can work together again. Uh, is, it would be blissful. You know, I think about them every day. We have a band thread. It's amazing. But don't forget, tonight there's going to be a treat. Uh, we're live, right, Edward? We have yes, live. We have a brand yep. new video coming for, for you guys tonight. Okay? You don't Edward, want to reveal the song yet, for right? Taking the time for a talk with me. I beg your pardon? No, so you don't want to re- reveal what song it's for yet. You're just telling people to watch no, for tonight. Oh, no. This is <laughs> brand new. This is. This is uh, um, yeah, this video we've just put together in the last couple of weeks. I'm very All excited right. for people to see it and hear it. It's a lot of fun. All, All right, right, everybody, check out the, the Blues album. There, Edward. You too, yeah. David. Blues album out tomorrow. Vinyl, CD, however you want to get it. And uh, 14 tracks total from throughout David's career, remixed, remastered. Uh, the completion of the Red, White, and Blue trilogy. Always great to talk to you, David. Best to you and the family. Oh, God bless you. Stay safe and well. All your listeners, I send my love. We'll get through this, baby. No worries. God bless. Take care, DC. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Thank you for tuning in, and please hit that like button. It's appreciated. Make sure that you subscribe for more rock-related content.